uh, monitoring and evaluation is one of the core management principles. Anytime you can monitor a program rigorous, uh, closely and then evaluate its impact rigorously, perhaps using quantitative and qualitative methods, you're more likely to learn from that exercise. Uh, that helps both in improving the quality of the program as well as uh, thinking, uh, taking the learnings from the program and translating them into future programs as well. Now this is an idea that private sector managers understand very well and they often calculate the ROI on their programs. In the government in India, uh, the government by the way is the largest economic player in India, uh, the uh, monitoring and evaluation is done very rarely. Uh, on the other hand, it's very important that uh, evaluation of programs happen, partly because we want to make sure that the programs are effective, but also that we learn something from the program so that we design future programs to be more effective than they have been in the past. At ISB, uh, what we're interested in doing is trying to look at the social impact of government programs. This involves trying to see not only what is the ROI, but also what has been the economic and social effect of different programs. So for let me give you an example. Right? So for example, if you have a scholarship program for girls, uh, what you want to see is not only that the scholarship program, that the, the scholarships were distributed to girls, but also whether or not the girls actually completed schools, right? And perhaps enrolled in higher education. These are different kinds of social and economic impacts of the scholarship program that you would want to rigorously measure using appropriate analytical tools. Uh, now what we have done, many of us have done, is to actually go out and look at different kinds of government programs and develop, using different kinds of analytical tools, uh, assess whether or not those programs have been effective at instituting long-term social and economic change. So what we've done in this issue of ISB Insight is to examine uh, four impact evaluations done by ISB faculty members. So uh, for instance, my colleague Professor Shilpa Agarwal has looked at the effects of the Prime Minister's Gram Sarak Yojana, a large program uh, to build rural roads in India. Now the outlay for this program is in the tens of thousands of crores. And so we'd naturally be interested in seeing if building roads had an effect on the lives of people who live in rural India. Uh, we can think about whether the roads increase their access to different kinds of goods and services and whether consumption increased, both of consumer goods as well as commodities such as fertilizer. We might be interested in seeing whether the roads increase employment opportunities in villages and we might be interested in seeing whether education uh, increased as a result of greater employment opportunities. So uh, Shilpa's article actually takes a look at whether or not the uh, uh, Rural Roads program was effective in instituting social and economic change. Similarly, my colleague uh, Professor Shishir Devnath is taking a look at the Janani Suraksha Yojana, also called the Safe Motherhood Scheme, which incentivizes mothers as well as health workers to um, have uh, deliveries in a, a hospital or an institutional setting rather than at home because such deliveries have been shown to uh, actually be safer for both the mothers as well as the infant. Uh, a key part of this program is cash payments made to both mothers as well as the health workers to motivate them to actually have the in a delivery in an institutional setting. Uh, so Shishir's research shows that the infant mortality as a result of this scheme actually declined and so did maternal mortality. So we are able to uh, confidently say that this program was not only had a ROI impact but also had a social effect which increased welfare for many people. Uh, now, the use of cash transfers to motivate government workers is actually quite controversial. So while cash transfers were effective in the case of the Janani Suraksha Yojana, uh, it, it's still an open question whether we should use them in all situations and for all programs. So in the case of the Western Himalayas Watershed Program, my colleague Ashwini Chhatre shows that they're actually uh, not very effective at all. And instead what cash transfers do uh, as a way to motivate uh, government workers is that they crowd out the intrinsic motivation that many government workers have to do their jobs. So in that sense, uh, you know, what, we're, what the combined, uh, the combination of these two articles is saying is that uh, cash incentives should be used sparingly and only in very special situations. So finally, uh, I'm, uh, there's an article that I wrote about some of the work that I did with colleagues in, uh, from Australia on the uh, Bihar Rural Livelihoods Program, so this also called Jivika. Uh, this is a large program for community development in the poorest uh, communities of Bihar 
and it's a very team based program uh, targeted particularly uh, at involving women in community development so uh, it key aspect of this program is that uh, trust and cooperation should increase as a result of this program and if uh, such trust actually increases then it very well might be that the program has long lasting effects even when the program is no longer there but of course how do you measure trust and cooperation and so uh, what we did is to develop new techniques to measure trust and cooperation in uh, villages of Bihar and we saw that actually as a result of the program trust uh, increased in these villages uh, not only amongst the women who were participating in the program but also men were more likely to trust women uh, after they have participated in the program rather than in those villages where there was no program.